four-part series about crying about hoonigans or any of that stuff. Um, seen some great videos out there. Vin, uh, Hurt, uh, Zach, they've all dropped videos. Great guys. Had good times with them. It's all gone. It's bye. So from now on, we're going to be doing mini truck stuff. Stuff that I actually love. Builds, having fun, and going out and living life. Um, I'm not trying to be a professional YouTuber. I'm just going to enjoy these last couple years of retirement and let you guys enjoy them with me. So, let's start with my favorite, and that's my mini truck. You guys all saw me build the SEMA, Sam, uh, the SEMA Slammer, the Honda Accord. That was my daily driver. That was actually the car that I drove around. I actually love that car. It's a K24 five-speed. My son drives it, and in fact, we bought another one. My daughter has one, too. So we're a, a Honda Accord family, and we love the K24. Now that they're driving those cars, Dad had to get his own new car, and I could have got any new car I wanted, but I wanted a mini truck. Um, this is actually one of my favorite year make and model mini trucks. I'm privileged to say that I actually got to buy one. For all you nerd fact checkers and Googlers and all that, this is less common than in any of your GTRs that are here in America. Maybe maybe not a Nismo, but most of your GTRs, this is more rare. This is a 1985 short bed, extra cab, automatic turbo truck. Okay, so in 85, there was only 1,500 of these imported. From what I can find and anybody else can find, look it up, there's less than 1% of these trucks and these models made in the United States. So me, this is a gym. All you JPR owners, yeah, go suck it. This is actually more rare. Maybe not worth as much, but more rare. Now, of course, in my fashion, I couldn't leave it stock. Uh, I will show you some pictures here of what it looked like stock. It came from an electrical owner, electrical company owner that I know. Um, he sold it to a nephew, so it's a two truck owner. Meaning, excuse me, it's been through only two owners before it came to me. It has 210,000 miles on it, so it's not salvaged. Uh, it did have some rust. Um, it's a great truck. When I got it, it needed everything. We needed it to do brakes, fuel lines, water pump, radiator, just everything from sitting after 10 years, we had to do. We'll throw some pictures of it when I had it dropped off and basically what it looked like when I got it. And now we're at where it's at. Um, as soon as you get these trucks, the first thing you're gonna know is the fuel injection system is from the 80s. The fuel injection system is not great. One of their bigger, badder problems is air flow meter, this guy right here. It's a trap door style air flow meter. Um, if you're gonna make power or do anything with these motors, this thing will give you a horrendous amount of problems. The other thing is it's a tiny turbo with a tiny exhaust housing and it's buried down there. Um, those create heat and that heat destroys motors. If you look in the, some of the stock pictures we'll show you, it has no intercooler. The pipe comes straight out of here and drops straight down into the turbo, which isn't great also. So the first things I did as for modifications and modifications for these years in the 90s was did the front mount intercooler. So we put a front mount intercooler in as well as a top mount turbo and an upgraded turbo. So this is a max speeding rod, cheap, 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 CT28 with the built-in wastegate. I did have to cut the mount and rotate it over and I'm tricking the wastegate with my own boost control valve right here so I can modify the boost levels. Now right now it's just running on spring and it's running on a stock ECU. The stock ECU um, is only good to about 10 pounds of pressure, 10 PSI, and then you really have to start messing with the air flow meter. Now, uh, Sucky's dad is actually a pro on one of these. He had one of these trucks before and he's, you can take this little door off and tweak it and trick the motor to thinking it needs more fuel and in more boost it works. But we're going to leave this alone and we're going to take out all this 1980s wiring and we're going to upgrade to Helltech. We ordered a S&P complete wire loom harness and that wire harness gave us the option um, Gabe, thank you for helping us out. Uh, boost control, nitrous control, launch control, and E85. 
So we are going to be running an E85 sensor so that we can run flex fuel. Um, the other thing with Helltech is we get to rid of all of this bull crap here. We're going to clean all of this up and it's going to be running off of a map sensor and not an airflow meter and all the other 1980s electronics. So upgrade so far up in the engine bay is the turbo, the um, Brad made DIY log manifold. We'll throw some pictures of that. And uh, Deech works rising rate fuel regulate fuel pressure regulator as well as it has a matching deech works fuel pump in the gas tank and then i took the fuel filter on these they're notorious they're down here and they suck and i put the fuel filter up there so it's a canister style easy to go get rid of as well as i put a durell cooling system in it so it has a durell fan control with a durell electric fan in the transmission this is the next funny thing is it's not a japanese transmission when I got the truck, the Japanese transmissions, the automatics, are not good. And as soon as you put them up to power or try to tow a boat, you just destroy them. So I got a Turbo 350. It's the generic three-speed transmission that you can put behind these. Thank you to LC Engineering. We'll put a link to them below. They're the ones who sells the adapter kit, as well as the manifold that I or the manifold plate that I built my log with. Um, LC Engineering has all the parts for these. If you guys want to turbo or do anything, go see LC Engineering. They got all your stuff. And then S&P has all your wiring. So anything you guys need for as far as like wire looms and all that, S&P has everything. Um, went ahead and got a built 350. Reason behind this built 350 is a Japanese transmission. If I can get them rebuilt, stock is about $2,200. This transmission. $850, the adapter is $400, the torque converter, because it's custom, $500, and then you have to have the drive shaft modified, another $250. I was around $2,500 to do the conversion, but it's built. It's a fully built transmission with a built billet converter that's a 3500 stall. You can't do that with a Japanese tranny. Now, I could have gone five speed, but I don't like shifting gears. I'm an old man. I want to put it in drive and let it go. Plus, my daughter enjoys driving this truck. She seems to think it's partly her truck. She likes smoking other dudes with trucks. So, you know, she got to put the hammer down. Um, and automatic's the way to go. So, in here, we're going to leave it virtually stock. It's going to get the Helltech. Next time you guys see, we're going to be installing on the next series or the next video. We're going to be installing the Helltech and doing a fire up on it. Um, let's go inside and I'll give you a little walk around of what we've done inside. Oh yeah. And for all you bad bodywork guys, I'm a horrible body guy. Don't look how bad my shit is. This is my first try. We'll show you guys the big rust that I replaced. I cut this whole panel out and replaced from here all the way around. And now I'm blocking and blocking and blocking and trying to get the lines back to right. But we'll show you some pictures of Brad's first attempt of panel work. Not, not great, but she'll do. She's a work truck. So inside, I went ahead and contacted NRG and got a set of seats because I love their seats. Got one of their NRG wood grain steering wheels. It's like a copy of a, a Nardi, which is what they did back in the days. I actually was able to save the Alpine stereo that came in this truck. It's a 90s CD player and was able to reuse it with a Bluetooth commander. Um, it is powering all Fosgate's uh, stereo, all Fosgate amps, Fosgate speakers. It's got uh, six and a half and one inch tweeters in the doors. It's got six by nines and fours in the back as well as two twelves that are in, we'll show you pictures of it, that are in a custom box that we made. We also dynomatted the whole entire truck. So it's dynomatted from the firewall all the way back up and new carpet. Today, I'm installing the new American shifter, which I don't like the T thing. We're gonna get an NRG shift knob, but an American shifter to go with the American tranny. Uh, at that point, I'd say we're kind of done for the day because I just wanted to catch you guys up. I wanted to tell you guys it's all build stuff. It's all fun, and we're gonna be at it, back at it. So next video, you're gonna see us probably playing with this truck. <laughs>